Thank you, Shuman. Can everybody hear me well? That was not a joke. I just said, can you hear me well? That's it. Am I too loud? We speak loud anyways. Uh, Shuman, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And you said pretty much everything about myself. You forgot to mention that two years ago I had a colonoscopy. <laughs> and that is, a, that, was a, that is a tough act to follow. You know, I mean, I was supposed to have been the guy speaking right before the first break. And he kind of switched it around. And after this uh, great speech, though it was on video, I think it's going to be very hard to follow. But I have to say, when I uh, see that video, when she talked about the fact you can't tell the Atlantic how to behave, and I have to say, you can't tell Schumann how to behave, you know? But, uh, but the thing is that I also do have a girl inside me, and that is a comedian. And I think that's what has been inside me. And I'm serious. I am serious. Oh, I'm supposed to stand here. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm serious. I, I, I realized that I'm an engineer. I was trained to be an engineer because in this country, you know, uh, we were kind of programmed to be engineers. And I say this all the time that you have to live by the Dell philosophy, D-E-L-L. -L. You have to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer, else you're a loser. <laughs> so I became an engineer. And then one thing that happens when you become an engineer in, the, engineer in this country, you get a very good looking wife. You know, I mean, I could have my pants all the way up to here, but I'll still get a good-looking wife. <laughs> and I did. She's 10 years younger than I am. Woohoo! <laughs> but the thing is that, it was uh, back in 2008, um, we went for the Hajj. And uh, came back from Hajj. We used to live in San Diego, California. You know, living the American dream. Nice house. Have a, a little kid. Good job. Everything. And then come back from the Hajj, and I tell my wife, um, I've had a revelation. And she says, oh my God. <laughs> you know, she was trying to picture me with the beard and everything. I say, I've had a revelation. I'm going to quit my job at Qualcomm and become a full-time stand-up comedian. <laughs> and she said, oh my God. <laughs> Are you going through midlife crisis? <laughs> I said, no, that is my revelation. And in fact, uh, being in America, I was really getting a lot of mileage as a comedian. I think I was uh, respected quite a bit by the, a lot of American people for being a very different kind of a person. And that uh, is something that America does. It, it really uh, values and respects diversity. And they thought, okay, this guy, you know, we have a lot of comedians, but look at this guy, he's kind of different. Like, he's a Bangladeshi immigrant, he's an engineer, he's a Muslim comedian. So I had a huge following. They followed me everywhere. They were FBI agents. And I said, dude, I'm not one of them, okay? I'm not a terrorist. I love America. I love all things American. Made in China. For America, I will do jihad. <laughs> Some of you have heard this joke a thousand times. Oh, Naveed, come on, I've heard that joke before. True, I've said this joke a hundred times, if not a thousand times, all over America. In, you know, in, in the middle of America, West Coast, East Coast, Hillbilly Town. Yeehaw, what? You know, all that stuff. Everybody laughed. And one time I was doing this show in, in Michigan, you know, Midwest. And I remember that uh, it was a comedy club. Uh, it was called the Ann Arbor Showcase. Good crowd, people were laughing. And then there was this gentleman sitting right in the middle. Tough guy, short hair, pretty scary. He was not laughing and he had this look on me. I'll see you in the parking lot. <laughs> and I was nervous, you know, after the show I got up. Sure enough, this guy comes to me. He says, can I have a word with you, sir? I said, wow, I never knew I got knighted by the queen. And he said, um, I'm from the United States Army. I said, oh my God. And they said, I want to tell you two things, sir. I said, yes. First of all, you are damn funny on that stage. I said, oh, cool. <laughs> the second thing I want to tell you something, sir. From your seven minutes of comedy, I learned more about Muslims and Islam than I did in my two years tour of duty in Iraq. I said, that's powerful. And then I said to, I told him that, uh, 
um, my mission is accomplished. And he says, sorry, I still want to ask you one question. I says, what it is. You, can you really have four wives? <laughs> four wives? You kidding me? Four wives means four mothers-in-law. Now that's going to lead a young Muslim man to go and blow himself up. That's what I call the Muslim version of four weddings and a funeral. <laughs> he laughed, shook my hands, and then he said, uh, can I buy you a drink? I said, I don't drink, but you can buy me a hamburger. And he did. We talked. And then I realized that uh, my mission is not only accomplished, but it has been going on for quite a while. Because after 9-11, Really what was happening is that a lot of us Muslim comedians in the United States, there is Amaz Jibrani, he's from Iran, there's Ahmed Ahmed, Egyptian guy, they actually had a tour called the Axis of Evil. And there was uh, Azhar Usman, he actually came to Dhaka. If you remember, there's some of you may have seen him. Uh, he's an Indian American lawyer and he looks, I mean, he looks like a, you know, he's got a beard and he's, he wears a turban and he's got this tour called Allah Made Me Funny. And of course there's this brilliant comedian, his name was uh, Naveed Mahbub. I'm just kidding. But anyway, so, so it was not just Muslim comedians, it was comedians all across the board. You know, we were going on stages and we were cracking fun on about everything that was going on. We made fun of the fact that, you know, it's really a handful of aberrations that kept a billion Muslims hostage. You know, we were carrying all these messages. We were talking, talking about being strip searched when going through the airport. You know, that the fact that, you know, somebody was saying this Qasr prayers at the airport and get, get, guess what, next, the next, he, he, next thing he knows, he gets pulled off the, off the plane. This time I was uh, traveling in the US. I was on a Southwest, Southwest Airlines flight and this very good looking blonde woman sits next to me and and then, you know, and I usually say a prayer before takeoff. It's just like routine, you know? And he said, did you just say your prayers? And she, I said, yeah. I also say my prayers. You know, I hear, you know, and, and then she said, oh, you know, is this plane gonna go down? I said, no. She said, what, what is, but, but she was flying for the first time. She was kind of scared and everything. It was kind of cool. Every time there was a turbulence, she kept hugging me. It was kind of cool. <laughs> and I said, pilot, go through the roughest weather you can. <laughs> but anyways, uh, jokes aside, Basically, what is the core message here? Is that the core message is that any message that you have, you can deliver to your target audience in a whole number of ways. You know, you can have, for example, right now there's a video going around, you know, some guy in some obscure part of the United States made a video and now this whole uh, upheaval is happening all over the world. Now, these are expressions of uh, an individual's act. But the thing is that what's happened, you know, uh, you know, four diplomats, innocent diplomats uh, and Marines uh, die in the process, right? Now that, that is still, you know, a way to give a message, but is that the right way to give the message? The whole thing is that there's always a message and there's always a target audience. It can be a very simple thing, like, okay, a guy likes a girl and he can just send her an SMS saying, I love you. Or he can send her an email or, you know, like, uh, you know, tie a message to the leg of a pigeon and say, oh, go tell her. <laughs> or you can just go say, hey, you know, baby, I love you. Or sometimes they throw acid on her face. Well, that's not funny, but that, that's not what they have. Or sometimes they harass her. But again, this is again a message intended for an audience, a whole slew of methods of delivering that message. And the outcome of how the message is received depends on how it is delivered. If you're aggressive, chances are the message will not be perceived or received the way it is intended to be, right? And so, as comedians, when we had our, the, the girl cell, you know, start flourishing, we realized that we really are, are emotional people. I'm not an engineer, I am an emotional people. And my mentor who taught me comedy said, Navi, there's no such thing as victimless comedy. You're always a victim of a situation and that's when you are really able to deliver the message very effectively in the form of humor. Once you have gotten out of that whole situation. And that's really what we comedians do. We are really giving out messages. We're doing it in a very subliminal fashion. That is the difference over here. And that's really what I want to talk about is that there's a message and I, there's an audience, but I am delivering it through humor. And the beauty of that is that we can do it in a subliminal fashion. 
I can tell you a joke. You know, I, I had these jokes about the Muslim, you know, four wives and everything. The message was really, you know, I'm the average guy next door. Love thy neighbors, you know, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, doesn't matter. We are all children of Abraham. That was the message. But it is delivered through humor, not directly, but in a subliminal fashion. They say, oh, you know, that comedian was so funny. What happens? We come back from a show or we go see a comedian and they say, that joke was so funny. We keep rewinding and replaying it in our minds. And he said, oh, and you're, you're kind of driving and you, <laughs> you start laughing. Somebody said, look, that crazy person laughing at himself. But anyways, the whole idea is that you're reliving that moment. You're reliv reliving the jokes. And what happens? At some point you say, but you know what? What he said, I think is true. And so we have, we have all these kind of messages. I mean, there, there's a whole slew of issues in this world, you know. The speaker right before me talked about um, uh, women who are, uh, who are uh, harassed. You know, the, uh, the, she talked about gender equality. There is uh, corruption. There is uh, climate change. There is war going on. You know, there are so many issues that are going on. And we can, uh, we can enlighten our audience through humor. And the thing is that we can do it indirectly, in a subliminal fashion. Make them laugh, deliver the message, go home, let it sink in, and then one time they will realize, you know what, maybe he is correct. And this is a mechanism a lot of people are now using, and I have myself have uh, been involved in such a, a few such processes. For example, uh, recently there was an HIV awareness drive going on for university students. Now, safe sex or you know, uh, safe needle usage is a topic which is very much of a taboo in our country, in our society. Now, how do you deliver this kind of a message uh, among 18 to 22 year audience members who are there, you know, hormones are raging at the same time, some of their parents are there, their, their professors are there, and openly you want to talk about this. So, it was UNAIDS and it was a JCI chapter, they said, you know, it's a very sensitive topic, how do we approach our audience? Navid, can you help us? I said, yeah, what are your core messages? These are the five core messages. I said, fine, we're going to say it's a comedy show. And we had a comedy show, and subliminally, those five messages were delivered. And they said this was one of the most successful HIV awareness campaigns we had. And what happens when you laugh is that you loosen up. It is what I call the non-alcoholic way of getting high. Because your circulation is going, you would disarm your audience. You know, your mom could be sitting next to you, but guess what? You are both sharing the same humor. You kind of forget the differences, and that barrier goes down, and you can send out subliminally that sensitive message, which is where the effectiveness comes in. There was a, I, in, the, in California, I used to go around with a doctor, and he used to treat patients, cancer patients. And he said, Naveed, before I you know, go and give my talk, I want you to do 10 minutes of comedy and talk about these healing processes. And they said, they're gonna laugh, but at the same time, they will hear those messages, and it really helps in their healing process. For me, it was, it was a, a phenomenal experience. And there's, there are so many other examples. Cimex, a cement company, they used to have safety training classes, and they said, you know, we're spending thousands and thousands, and you know, guys come to the class, they're bored, they fall asleep, they go back to work, they learn nothing, and they're still having accidents. Navid, can you help us? I said, what are your core messages? These are the four messages. Fine, let's have a comedy show. We have a comedy show, four messages are delivered. They said this is one of the most successful uh, training campaigns we've had. So the thing is that, once again, is if there's a message, there is an audience, and humor can, not always, can sometimes be a very effective way to deliver that message in a supplemented fashion, in an entertaining fashion, because that, that's one time when your audience is very receptive. You deliver the message, go away, let it do its own work. And uh, I think that really is the core of my message over here, what I do for a living run right now. And uh, I want to conclude this, with this, that uh, um, I have a comedian friend. He was here a few days ago, uh, or rather a couple of months ago. Uh, his name is David Ryan, a very, very funny comedian. And uh, he said one thing, that uh, humor is how we deliver the messages so that we have a better, better world. And he said, make laugh, not war. Thank you very much.